funding for Indian Pride is provided by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, the Forest County Potawatomi Tribe, National City, the Otto Bremer Foundation, and the members of Prairie Public. On this episode of Indian Pride, meet some of Indian Country's heroes. Learn why we should not second guess the wisdom of the rabbit and the turkey. Then, enjoy the unique music from a beautiful Navajo flute player. Hi, I'm Jeannie K. Randall, and welcome to Indian Pride. In Indian Country, heroes are often found in the extended family unit. Aunties, uncles, sisters, brothers can greatly influence a child. Many great Indian leaders are held with high esteem, and grandmas and grandpas are top heroes. Indian Pride will share a story of one of Indian Country's big heroes and also profile some great everyday heroes. He gets so famous, he can never even eat a hamburger along the way. I remember stopping off one time, coming over here to Oklahoma from California and going into a restaurant. We sat down and ordered hamburgers and the word got around that Jim Thorpe would sit over in the corner and everybody came over, poor guy, he had to eat a cold hamburger. Grandpa Hiram taught him how to hunt when he was four years old. And he got a little bit older, his job was running down the horses. And that's probably why he was such a good runner. The rules uh, in the Olympics in 1912 were not really set down properly. And it didn't show much of a division between amateur and professional. So he went in the Olympics and won the decathlon and the pentathlon. And then afterward, a newspaper man from North Carolina said that he was a professional and that he shouldn't have been in the Olympics, which he called then for amateurs, not professionals. And that's why uh, his medal was taken away and his records were struck from the book. He had one of the very first professional football teams, and they were called the Orang Indians. They were all Indians, mostly from the old Carlisle Indian School. And he became the president of the, what was then the American Football Association, and now called the National Football League. And he was one of the first that was taken into the um, Football Hall of Fame. He was a very quiet man. As a matter of fact, he told me once, he said, uh, you never learn anything while you're talking, <laughs> which is true. Uh, right now we're on a, a burn that happened in early uh, August here on the, the Blackfoot Reservation, right next to Glacier National Park. We're only a few of um, the Native American hutchot crews in the nation. We're a national resource. We can get called all over the United States, Canada, Alaska. We're a highly uh, trained crew in all aspects of suppression on a fire. When it's a really high intense ongoing fire, our main job is to suppress that fire, get a handliner on it, get an anchor point started so it has no um, means of escaping. When I was talking about hotline, that's actually right along the fire's edge, digging, trying to uh, control that fire spread. We call it one foot in the black. The toughest spot I've ever been in was uh, a fire in Idaho. We were so far up inside this mountain, the fire from the bottom took off and it raced towards us and we did have to run for our lives. We were close enough to a safety zone well, we all made it in there. A safety zone is uh, your best friend on a fire. It's a place where it's just totally nuked out, no vegetation, nothing in there is going to burn. Go into the safety zone and just relax and watch the show. Let it do its thing and then once the fire goes through, then 
go at it again. I've thought a lot about this issue of, uh, of heroes. Our history books largely erase the names of Native Americans. I've always thought we should have a place in this country where we uh, celebrate the leadership of American Indians, the George Washingtons and the Thomas Jeffersons of, of Native Americans. It, there have been some remarkable Indian chieftains, the Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, uh, Chief Joseph, and others, who, uh, when you study what they did, what, you know, the, the legacy they left behind, were really quite remarkable leaders. And I think we should have a place in this country to celebrate Indian leadership. Well, Billy, welcome to Indian Pride. It's such an honor to have you joining us today and talking about heroes. It's my pleasure to be here, and I have, I have many, many heroes. Billy, when you were growing up in Pine Ridge, tell us uh, what you were dreaming about. How did you, first of all, how did you ever become involved in the Olympics? And when you did, who were the heroes that inspired you to become so great at what you do? I think I have to think in terms of two heroes. And, and the first hero was my dad. Uh, shortly after my mom died, but many people were involved in the story I'm going to tell. I'll tell it through my dad. My mom died. Uh, I later turned nine, and I'm fishing with my dad. And he stroked my arm and said, son, you have broken wings. And I started crying. He said, but I'll share something with you. And if you follow it, someday you'll have, you'll have wings of an eagle. Took a circle, took a stick and drew a circle in the ground. Step inside of the circle. Close your eyes. Look inside of your heart, your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. What do you find? I couldn't respond. Boom! <laughs> he claps his hands. I'll tell you what you find. Anger. You just lost your mom. Hate, because people have expressed hatred toward us. Jealousy, because we don't have anything of material value. But the jealousy blinds you. You don't see the beauty, the virtues, and the values of our people. And you have a whole lot of self-pity. All of those things will destroy you. Look deeper, and those are, that's where the dreams lie. Find the dream, pursue the dream. Then he talked about heroes. So my hero became Buster Charles. Buster, Buster Charles. Charles. Buster Charles was 1929. He won the first six events of the U.S. National Decathlon Championship. He injured his ankle, had to drop out. A year later, he won the U.S. National Championships. 1931, he broke his back. Recovered, finished fourth at the Olympic Games in the decathlon, and he became my hero. Haskell Indian School, where I went to high school, would give the Buster Charles Award. I won at the Buster Charles Award. <laughs> my senior year, when I should have won the Buster Charles Award, the benefactor either passed away and quit giving the Buster Charles Award, <laughs> so I didn't get my Buster Charles Award. <laughs> and to finish the story about my hero, I came back from the Olympic Games, and I was in Phoenix at a function, and a man walked in and said, who's Billy Mills? I said, I'm Billy. And he said, we have another Olympian that's here at the, attending an engineering conference. He wants to meet you. and. Uh, He's a decathlon athlete. So I knew right away it was Buster Charles. I walk in and I meet Buster Charles. He's fourth at the games. I'm the gold medalist. I couldn't speak. So it was like meeting God. He put an armor on me and said, relax, Billy. I was fourth. You won the gold. But uh, I went to Buster Charles's funeral for J July of this year, 98 years old. He had a stroke. His uh, wife was concerned, age 94, and she got emotionally involved and she passed away. When they told Buster after he recovered from the stroke a few days later that, that his wife died, he said he was ready. He was ready to join her. And he just quit eating. So, uh, well, where my, was he from? Oneida Indian, Wisconsin. Was he and, Indian? Oh, yes. Buster Charles is an Oneida Indian. And he, he went to Flandreau Indian School and St. Joseph's. So, at the end of the story, just recently I was in St. Joseph's speaking, and they gave me, when I finished, my Buster Charles of War. Oh, how horrible <laughs> is that? Wow, what a great story. Wow, and, and so after Buster Charles then, who else was your hero during that time? I, uh, <clears throat> after Buster Charles, and of course as I started growing up, there, there became many heroes, my, my family, my, my oh. brothers and sisters. Uh, Mom died when I, when I was eight and dad when I was 12. And they had this unique ability, although they, we lived pretty much in poverty, uh, of being able to have us take the virtues and the values of our past and transmit them into today's times. And when Native people do that is when you see the modern-day warrior taking the virtues and the values of the past 
So my family, my brothers and sisters, they're, they're warriors. They're, they're, they're my heroes. But I have many more. My Probably, in a sense, the closest hero I have is, is my wife. Oh. Uh, this year we will have been married 45 years, actually January of 2007. And I quit running. We got married my senior year in college. I quit competing. And she knew that there was a that there was something missing inside. Right. So she continued encouraging me. And she gave up much of her career as an artist so I could pursue my career wow. as an athlete. And uh, I'm already saying that I've gone to 91 different countries, half a dozen times around the world. But uh, without Pat, that would not have happened. I would not have won the gold medal. What a nice and, uh, tribute. She's going to like my, hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> my hero left me because three years ago she said, I'm through raising you. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> and she went back to school to pursue her master's. And uh, last month, she entered her first her master's, master's degree in art. Mm -hmm. She entered her first year at show, and she got best of show. Oh, wow. So, uh, that is so wonderful. I'm playing the reverse role. I'm supporting her. Well, great. Well, I'm sure that uh, she really appreciates uh, your support. Um, she was a good teacher, I'm sure. Oh, she was an excellent teacher. <laughs> and But there's other you, heroes as you mature through life. Uh, uh, one of my one of my heroes that uh, I think should be on the uh, United States Supreme Court, uh, John Echohawk. Okay. Uh, John Echohawk. John Echohawk is one of the 100 most powerful attorneys in America, and today, in a given year, with five to 20 percent of all of the cases before the United States Supreme Court pertaining to the violating of tribal sovereignty, mm -hmm. if that happened to any other group of people in America, they'd be up in arms. We're such a small group, four and a half million people. John Echohawk should be on the United States Supreme Court. Why? The third reason is the most powerful. 1929, Thurgood Marshall comes out of law school, heads up NAACP, working through the legal court systems of America, changed the laws to eliminate Plessy versus Ferguson with Brown versus Board of Education, ultimately on the United States Supreme Court. NAACP fought for the inclusion of African Americans into the mainstream. We spun off of that and we formed the Native American Rights Fund. Okay. NAACP, Native American Rights Fund. John Echohawk, Thurgood Marshall. Wow. It's a precedent that Congress understands, so we need to advocate John Echohawk to the United States Supreme Court. By the way, I agree with you on that. He's very much involved in helping us with Indian pride, and he is. we're honored to have him, and I really appreciate those kind words for all of us for John Echohawk. Then there's a history that we don't know about, uh, about us in America. History is written by the winners, Yes. and we were not defeated because of the treaties. So we're rewriting history in the way it should be written, equitable, fair and equitable, and it's told from our soul, from our spirit, mm -hmm. uh, from our experiences. So another collection of heroes are those members of my tribe that were massacred at the Wounded Knee Massacre. Initially, it was called a battle, uh, 1890, 1892, and what America should be appalled and should be ashamed and be, be just, just be wanting to correct in the history of this great country of ours, the greatest number of Congressional Medals of Honor ever issued were the 23, I believe, that were issued to the military that murdered, massacred the approximately 350 men, women, and children from our tribe. They had one weapon, the documented bullet holes in the skulls of the women in the children, uh, wow. taking the reproductive organs of women and putting them on their bayonets. Uh, every one of those people who lost their lives today is my hero. Well, well, I mean, when somebody gives their life up for you, you Absolutely. know, and, and when you when you talk about any religion mm -hmm. and you talk about heroes, you're talking about laying your life down for anybody uh, is the greatest honor that you can give your friends and your family or anybody that is. Um, important to you in your life. Um, when everything is said and done, and we talk about all your heroes, and, and, and I know you are a hero for many people in Indian country, what is the most important thing that you want people to remember you for? I think I would like people to remember me from the simple standpoint that, that I was a warrior. When I came back from the Olympic Games, my tribe made me a warrior and challenged me. To, to live your life as a warrior, to take the four most powerful virtues of our people, bravery, fortitude, generosity, and wisdom. 
and challenged me to go on a journey to the center of my soul, virtue and the virtue of bravery and fortitude, and go on the journey to the center of my soul, and that's where you find the virtue of wisdom. You use that virtue to empower yourself, and then you go to the virtue of generosity and help empower others. And that's what I've simply tried to do in my life every day. What is, one, what is the most important message that you can give to all children in terms of being a, a hero? What can, what, a, what can a child do that could make them a hero, to be remembered as a hero when they get older? I think anybody, whether a child, an adult, anybody who's willing to go to the depth of their soul and find that passion. Everybody should follow a dream. Every dream has a passion. And every passion has its destiny. And if you achieve that destiny, you're a hero. Well, Billy, I hate to wrap this up. I could talk forever, as everybody knows, but I want to thank you so much for joining us today and making all of us proud of Indian country. You really define Indian pride. Thank you. Our stories, our, our, our stories that they tell us, I have never heard them to say, and they lived happily ever after. I never heard a story end that way. But the story they tell us about the rabbit, the little rabbit who carried a sack to feast and to dances and round dances, and they would eat after. He would open that sack in front of him and act like he's eating, but he's filling the sack up. So after the dances, he'd throw it and walk off. And this one little boy kept an eye on him, kept an eye on him, and finally asked his, his grandfather, this is what rabbit's doing. And the grandfather said, don't spy on your friends. Don't be, don't treat them the worst or think of them as the worst. Leave them alone. And so the next time they had a feast, the boy made sure he sat next to rabbit. He made sure. And so he was eating. He was doing the same thing, eating and filling up the sack. When he got it full and the dance was over, he told it and walked off. And the, the young man followed him, you know, hiding behind bushes and trees and everything. And the rabbit came over to this big clearing. And over to the side was an order ski, the roundhouse that we live in. And nine little rabbits ran out of there, little tiny ones. <clears throat> they were so glad to see rabbit. They were just jumping and hollering and screaming and saying, oh, we're so glad to see you. And so he gave the sack to, to, the, to the mother there. She took it in and, and put in a, a plate there or whatever and gave him back the, uh, the sack. And those little rabbits just hung on to his, his legs and just climbed up on him, jumped on his back. And, and they were saying, we, we're so glad to see you because we can sleep with our stomachs full tonight and we won't be hungry. And the young man in the bushes there heard about that. And, you know, he just got up and walked off. He couldn't say anything. And so, you know, that's, it's, you leave it at that. And you let each person that hears that story make up their own ending. How does it apply to me? How does it apply to somebody? And so we look at ourselves as rabbits sometimes. We look at ourselves as the young man sometimes, you know? Are we so hard, so hard on our own people? You know, these kinds of things. The coyote, he, um, he died a thousand deaths and came alive a thousand and one times. But he was always hungry. He's always scrounging. Always had a matty tail, always looking for food. And so by the stream, there was this turkey sitting there drinking water. So he came out and snuck up on it, and he jumped. And the turkey jumped up. And he landed on there, and he looked down in the water. And the turkey was down there at the bottom of the water. So he said, well, I'm going to get that turkey. He went out and got a big slab of stone, put it on his back and tied it. And he jumped in. 
And as he was going down, the rock got heavy and he turned like this. And as he looked up through the water, that turkey was sitting on a limb up above the water, watching him go down. And so it ends there, okay? It's up to you to figure out what it means to you. And this is what I tell the kids. And I ask them, just when we break for class, do you all want to be like the coyote? And in unison, all of them, no, Mr. White, you know. And then they all go, see him out in the playground, they're just like coyotes. The flute is a very personal and unique instrument to men and women alike in Indian country. Songs and stories vary from tribe to tribe, but the heart and soul of the message is priceless. Our musical guest today presents her own style on the flute. I'm proud to present Quintania Claw, a proud member of the Navajo Nation in Arizona. I'd like to thank all of my special guests today for sharing their gifts and talents with us. 
We invite you to join us next time as we present another great showcase of Indian pride. Whenever you get a chance, do something special for a child. Bye-bye for now. Funding for Indian Pride is provided by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, the Forest County Potawatomi Tribe, National City, the Otto Brimmer Foundation, and the members of Prairie Public.